it's Chris, Seb, and Jim, and we met on the Rebel Point forum group, and we're all interested in the accuracy and resolution of 3D scanners. Most of us can look at different models and say, yes, this looks more detailed than that. But we were looking for a way to quantitatively or numerically show that one scan is better than the other in the resolution. First, let's look at accuracy and precision. Think of it as arrows hitting a target. You can have, the best thing is where you have something that all the arrows hit right in the center in a tight cluster. So those are highly accurate and precise. If you look at this one up here, it's all the arrows are clustered very close together. So it's high precision, but it's not, they're not in the center of the target. So it's not that accurate. And then you have the other two cases where it's both, you don't have accuracy or precision, or you don't have, you have accuracy and low precision. Now let's look at resolution and point spacing. Here we have two different scanners, these points on the left and the ones here on the right. They have different point spacing. And the red object is an object that we want to be able to scan. The scan on the left, you'll see that the points can actually see the red square where the object on the right is within the point spacing. So the scanner will never see that object. We designed this artifact. It's a uh, small piece that has a bunch of ridges and they're all two millimeters high. And they go from this one down here, which is two millimeters wide down to the smallest one, which is 0 0.02 millimeters wide. I printed the artifacts on both my SLA and FDM printers. On the uh, FDM printer on my Prusa, you have to set the thin wall setting. You can use a caliper to check the different dimensions by measuring there. You can use the end of the caliper to measure the height. When you start the scan, I've been using the turntable in marker mode, no texture, and I do one complete 360 degree rotation on the table. After the scan, you want to go into the point spacing and set the point spacing down to 0.1 millimeters, and then you can fuse the point cloud. And then you want to go in and set the mesh quality to as high as possible, 6. And I've been setting the noise down to 0 so it doesn't do anything. And then tell it to fill the holes. Then you can export for analysis. Now we're going to do the analysis of the data. First we're going to bring in the CAD model of the artifact. Then we're going to load one of uh, Seb's POP2 models. 10 millimeters. And we're going to do a point pair alignment. So I'm going to pick three points on both sides here. And that gets us close. And I can do a best fit alignment. And I'm going to create a cross section. Go ahead and create that and I'll turn off the models, the CAD model and the other model and come see it from the view side view here. So now you can see the CAD model and you can see the scan results and then what I'm doing is going in and I'm creating 
um, caliper measurements. I'm doing an offset caliper and I'm just gonna, we're gonna mark the top of the caliper and the bottom in each of these. So I've gone and put calipers across all these trenches and ridges and you can see the nominal and the measures. We repeated this for five scans and then averaged them to get the results. So here we have Jim's POP and POP2 data. Along the bottom, the x-axis is the nominal ridge width. It goes from 2 to 0.2 millimeters. And on the y-axis, we have the percent of the scan data compared to the actual height. And this is where we use that caliper data to adjust the data for the 3D prints. And you can see that Jim's POP2 does better than his POP1, which is expected. We've loaded all the data into Excel. And here you can see Seb's uh, POP and POP2 data. And you can see how much radier the POP data is compared to the POP2. Um, the yellow line represents a, a scanner that has perfect uh, resolution. Uh, the red one shows the POP2 and the blue one shows the POP and you can see that the the red the POP2 is definitely better than the POP and you can also see that pretty much you can resolve what you want down to just between 1.2 and 1.4 millimeter features and when you think about that the rule of thumb is typically that you want to be able to measure with 10 times more resolution than the object you're trying to measure. Um, so if we're getting 0.1 millimeter spacing, that shows that we should be able to get around one millimeter resolution. And we're not too far off from that. I only have a pop scanner, and but I had two different versions of the software. I had the HandyScan version and the new RevoScan version, which allows you to set the point spacing down. And you can see the bottom one is where I was using the handy scan, which does pretty heavy filtering. And the top one, you can see it's noisier, but you can still see more uh, sh shape. And this shows up in the, the graphs here. Uh, you can see that at one point, the, the Revo scan actually starts doing better than the handy scan when you get down to the smaller sizes. So what have we learned? We've come up with an artifact that can be easily 3D printed by people around the world. You can check the accuracy with a caliper and we can use that object to help determine the resolution of these new 3D scanners. We've applied it to the POP and POP2 from RevoPoint and there's a bunch more 3D scanners that we're hoping to get data for. We'll put the resolution calibration artifact up on Thingiverse and the Prusa's um, websites. Well, we hope this was helpful. It was. Please hit like and subscribe, and have a great day.